us the name of your business, what you guys do. So it's Appalachian Overhead Door Services, and we do sell, service, and repair on residential garage doors. Cool. Yeah. No commercial. No commercial. No, not, not right now. So what is, what does that mean? How are you guys getting your business? Is your is your business coming from that uh, just one off? My garage door is broken. Somebody ran into it. The the opener isn't working, and somebody calls you kind of from your website. Or how how are you getting most of your business now? Um, pretty much it's just by word of mouth and referral. Um, we have tried some of the lead generators. Not sure. real impressed with that. Um, you got to pay a lot of money before you can get a job. <laughs> sure. Um. Just trying to really grow it a lot more organically than mm -hmm. other people are and just make a good name for ourselves as being trustworthy and reliable. And hopefully it takes off from there. What are what's you guys kind of radius? Where are you getting, where's your business live? Um, we prefer to stay from about Marietta North. We yeah. like North Georgia just because, you know. Less driving, less traffic. Yeah. <laughs> where are you located? <laughs> Waleska. We, oh, cool. Yeah, we live in Waleska. Cool. So, but he was born and raised in Cherokee <clears throat> County. So, cool. Yeah. I lived in White for like right on the edge of Carter's on White for like two two and a half years. Yeah, yeah. it's a good area. I started this. Yeah, we definitely would service that not area. A, it's not a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not a lot of stuff to do out there. I've, I've always said that, like White and Waleska and Rosaka and all of that was more interesting to me because I like the outdoors. But in Cartersville, there is. Nothing to do in Cartersville but eat. <laughs> but I, so everywhere that you any if you have a hankering for anything, you can solve that hankering in Cartersville. Yeah. But yeah. you cannot go do anything after you're done eating. You just have to just go home. Go to a different restaurant. Like you can go to <laughs> like yeah, literally save like, room for more in another restaurant. Like, yeah, oh, we're gonna God. get done at Applebee's. We're gonna go to Red Lobster and drink. <laughs> like you can go to TJ Maxx, I guess. There is nothing, no entertainment there. I mean, there, there's. I thought there was a movie theater. <laughs> that movie theater, yeah, maybe. The Can't parking lot is more fun than that movie theater. The parking lot is waiting to be converted into something. You know, it's actually, I think that's an AMC movie theater, isn't it? I think so. That is it AMC the stock that just got ballooned. Mm -hmm. There might be three movie theaters over there by the time we get back. <laughs> you know. We started dating in high school, so you talking about there's nothing to do and hanging out in parking lots. It was really um, kind of neat to see that a lot of the young kids didn't have anything to do this past year with COVID, and man, they'd be lined up with their trucks in the parking lot. Oh, oh yeah, this brings back yeah. memories. We're cruising again. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> from the Walmart to the McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, just bring uh, you know. People will find a way. Yeah. They want to be together. For sure. Yeah. yeah well, that's good. What brought you to, um, so Rockstock, you guys meet in Woodstock, right? Mm hmm So you're, that's kind of your, your 92 and 75 is the area you're kind of patrolling right there in North of Marietta. Yes. So, and what are you, where are you, how are, what does the referral look like? You're getting that from real estate agents. What, what are the people that maybe we know that we could introduce you to that's probably a good pipeline for well, definitely referrals. real estate agents and any kind of other service industry that might see Property when they're at management, some, right? Those mm. kind of things, yeah. Do but, you guys have um, a credit card processor in that group? Um, I believe so, but they're they're con a lot. I was gonna say, I, I think there's because Kathy May invited me to that one because there was did, one. I think they, yeah. Did they leave? Yeah, I, I think, think they so. Did. Okay, hmm. I wasn't sure. Yeah, they haven't asked for them, Tim and. Didi, I think were their names. Yeah. But they're they're on the retirement end, I think, and traveling a lot and stuff now. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're just lucky them. Yeah. <laughs> Makes one of us. Yeah. yeah. Makes one of or us. So young we won't get to retire. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I mean if you do if you do well early, our early success is the enemy of retirement. Really. Is yeah. success early and like uh some traction quickly, that's the enemy of retirement. You don't, you'll never want to retire now. You might be um, spending more days on the golf course and less days in your business, but you'll never be completely gone. I feel like there, yeah. there's there's people that enter business with the exit strategy to, you know, planning to get out of there at some point, and then there's people that kind of bird their business on their own because they know a trade will and they understand business. Those people don't leave a lot anyway. I mean, you'll be retired enough to do whatever you want to do on a day to day business, but that business will all if you get big enough. That business will always be in your family, and it'll yeah. always be on your mind. 
Yeah, that's right. what we, I mean, that's really what we want. We want to pass something on to our kids For if sure. we can, Absolutely. if they want to be part of it. Yeah, for sure. So, or family, niece. We have he has, We have a large family, so if we could bring them in and just keep it in the family, yeah, big family. Yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> where do your kids go to school? Cartersville. I homeschool all, all of them. Oh, I've well, graduated. I guess How many one, do you have? Four. We have okay. a twenty-one-year-old, fourteen, thirteen, and eleven. Bless your heart. And you've homeschooled all of them <laughs> mm-hmm. from the beginning? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I didn't realize that was what you meant when you said that at the beginning. Oh, my God. I commend you. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? We graduated the, yeah, the 21-year-old we graduated. He homeschooled all the way through. Oh, my God. So. So you have been working for, you. it is your time to retire. <laughs> it's about time for you to retire. Oh, no. If we can only Nine get him years. to take care of us. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's crazy. Is there, what was the, uh, what made you want to do that? Um, really honestly, um, back when he was a little boy, um, I saw even in the school systems when I was going, there's always been this push towards girls got to do this and they have to be this. And then they kind of just decided to focus really on girls in the public education system and everything was being geared towards them and making sure that they succeeded and they were leaving boys in the dust and not allowing um, little boys to just be boys Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, saying that they had issues if they were being boys in the classroom. Like hyperactive, you know. As soon as somebody said that my son at two was going to need medication, I just really started rethinking, I don't think so. So that's not the route I wanted to go. And he ended up being extremely dyslexic and everything, so we were able to really focus on his education a lot more than even the school system probably would have been able to at that point. Sure. Mm-hmm. So sure. You just, you're able to be more focused on him than they would be. Do you have all boys? No. Um, two two boys. girls are sandwiched in between the boys. So. Okay. But yeah, not wow. that we don't focus on girls. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think it needs to be even down. That's and such not a yeah. peculiar This way or this way. It's, so, it's, it's just peculiar. Like, uh, you're in your own business now. Do you do you relish not having some of that time back? Like, do you miss some of that time that you spend homeschooling now, or is it because of there's so much virtual learning going on? Is it more that you have more tools that makes it a little bit easier? Um, it is easier, but we we've been utilizing virtual stuff for a long time. I mean, um, how hands on virtu- is that homeschooling? However much you want it to be. You could have them completely virtual if you wanted to. You can actually send them to hybrid schools now where they go a couple days a week and then they do all their assignments and have to turn them in and they're accountable to somebody else. It's um, It's all preference. Yeah. So, Or I could sit and do everything with them every day and be like a teacher with a chalkboard. It just depends on, but then it depends on your kids too and their learning style and what works best for them. Not everyone learns the same. No, it's very individualized, and you can tailor it to even each kid. So, wow, that is so interesting to me. It's such a foreign, foreign <laughs> thought to me. I have about oh, mine's about to be four mm-hmm. this month, so he is going to school. Maybe now, <laughs> contemplating. Maybe <laughs> he might be going to school in the fall. Um, See, like with COVID though, too. The crazy thing about that was is there's been. Um, K-12 public school virtual online learning for almost 20 years already. And when they switched all these kids, they brought out this new platform and everybody's been complaining about it. Oh, it's so bad. And the teachers have to teach on the screen to the kids. I'm like, why didn't they use at least, there's at least four different platforms that public schools have used for years. And, and they now just, they want to complain about it. Yeah. And, but they're, yeah. and they're tried and proven and they work, but yet... They didn't put all the kids onto those platforms they already had. They tried to make something new and go, oh, it's not working right. Well, why <laughs> Why do you start something new in the middle of a pandemic? How chaotic is why that? Did, why did they do that? Because there's a push to get rid of homeschooling. And I think they're trying to say it didn't work right. What is the push to get rid of homeschooling? Because this is so interesting. I'm so <laughs> interested. Can you get rid of it? Yes, and they're trying. There's legislation to try oh, okay. to get rid of it. Um, it's all because, about the money, I think. Because they lose money if the kids aren't in school. Oh. Um, they get federal funding from it. Because they get paid for every day that kids are in school, and that's why there's attendance policies and so on and so forth. Because if they're not there, they don't make the money for the child. But um, there's a the big push is, is a lot of homeschoolers teach their kids different curriculum than what the school system says is 
correct and right. And they don't want that. They don't want free thinkers. If you really want to get down to it. Wow. That makes sense though. Because I remember hearing about teachers having to like go by this big binder and do every page how, how it says. Is there curriculum? Do you, what? Because I'm assuming that the push for standardized tests has been like to be eradicate standardized testing. So what is the scale of whether you or the tools are doing a good job? Um, in Georgia, it's pretty lax. Some other states are very rigid in their homeschool. Yeah, like um, they they pretty much will tell you you have to teach the state's curriculum to your student also. So um, they're very... And do they pass like the same finals or, or anything else? Is there is there anything that is mandated by the state? So in the state of Georgia, legally they have to go to school for 180 days out of the 365 and you have to keep attendance every year. And then every three years, standardized testing is required starting in third grade. Because you have to get a certain amount of credits to go to the next grade and whatnot, right? Um, no. Um, some states do require that you show all of that to move mm -hmm. them up. But for the most part, that's the teacher's discretion. Oh, okay. If they learn what they need to learn, you can pass them up. Most homeschoolers don't have a set grade um, just because they learn differently than other grade and in public school would. Oh, okay. But, um, like, I teach my children mastery, so they have to master a subject before they can move on to it, not just learn a little bit about it and then move on. But, yeah, it's a uh, – you can accredit, you can have accredited schooling and be homeschooling, but you have to go through – you have to keep track of everything you do. and But there's ways around everything anymore, so it – you can graduate with all the credits you need and be accredited and go on to universities. And most homeschool kids do really, really well in school. So in secondary, going on to college and university and everything. But, yeah, it, you can you can do it all. It doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. I had a friend who did homeschooling, and she ended up going to Oglethorpe, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And we kind of lost touch, but I remember... I remember that she did really good in school, like when she got to college. Yeah, most well, most homeschoolers are self starters. You know, like if I have to do something in the morning, I'm like, hey, you got this, this, and this to do. You need to go get started, and so they'll, you know, so there isn't this like get your work done, get your work done. You know? What what is what does you guys day to day look like? Um, do you, I'm assuming you handle the networking, the stuff like that for the business. Always busy. And then are you you're <laughs> you're in the car or in someone's garage? Um, we wish more. He's kind of home more. He was trying to work a full time job and start the business because we're still so new. But um, kinda he's home a lot good. more. But a lot of times we take our kids with us on jobs and we're teaching them the business and so and they're learning, oh I like that they're learning <laughs> skills. The little one gets to go with me. Yeah, more than in addition. <laughs> <laughs> to what their homeschooling day would look like. Um, sure. our it's girls, homeschooling just somebody else's home. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, our, our girls want to learn more of the sales side and the bookkeeping side. So that's coming up in the curriculum for them. So and they get up, they'll do usually once a week, we'll do like science and history or we'll watch documentaries of, on the subject we're learning. But yeah, it's it's crazy. Chores, we got pigs, we got chickens, we got cats. <laughs> Golly. So our life is just it's incredibly nuts. busy, huh? Yeah, Always and then something we, to do. And then if it, <laughs> if if there's an opportunity to have fun, we drop everything and we do it. I'll just say that right now. So that's good bonding, though. Every we'll drop it. And like yesterday, we went riding. We had like two hours. I was like, get. We got two hours. Let's load up. We're gonna go mountain bike riding, and we get back and go to our next appointment. <laughs> 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 so we fit it in and just. Yeah, it's crazy. That's exciting. It's I want to. I want to help you guys. I think that we can definitely introduce you to to some people and some opportunities that we have that can make that um, busy season a little busier for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. That's our goal. We've got a few little things we're having the works. We think this is kind of neat and interesting because, of course, our kids love YouTube, <laughs> and we were told that it might be cool to have a YouTube channel. Yeah. So yeah, fun. I can drive race cars. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or at least pretend anyway. Close enough. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you already scare me enough, John. <laughs> but yeah, you know, so just sacrifice one garage door. You gotta you gotta sacrifice oh, we can do that. the front of a car and one garage door for one good YouTube video. Yeah. Just let it go viral. 
take a jump one day. That would be awesome. <laughs> if you if you agree to run a car through the garage door, we'll help you record it and turn it into a, to a YouTube video. Well, Our like neighbor down that's the road a fact. used to drive. Whose car can we use though? One of you all? <laughs> no, Jimmy's down the road. Our friend used to race at Dixie Speedway. Yeah. Maybe he's got a car down there. Maybe he's got. I'd a imagine, car. yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're already all beat up. We need a dragster, not a. We just need to drive a car through it. (laughs) (laughs) That would be amazing. That would be. What? Yeah, school School bus. Yellow with the black racing trash. Very nice. A whole school bus. Very nice. Very nice, he said. You're in charge of finding the bus. I bet you could rent a school bus, though. (laughs) I, I would say that you could rent a school bus before you could rent. Somebody's car to run through a garage. I feel like it's low impact for the school bus. Probably so. <laughs> Very low. Like you could, you could just. <laughs> just a lot of damage to the garage door, though. Yeah, but that's the point. Yeah, that's good. It's that's what I'm saying. It's good and as then new. he comes in and he fixes it. Yeah. yeah. Borrow somebody's UPS truck and back it into it. I've seen that before. <laughs> that's a rough sketch of an idea. We need to refine that more, but. But uh, that's a good Too idea. Much fun. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys coming out here. Your, your business is very interesting. Anything that we can do um, to help you guys out, any opportunity that we can extend to you guys, um, you're more than welcome. Visit all our networking groups. I don't have anyone that's that's in your opportunity. I think Georgia Garage Doors, um, Russ and Russ. It's not Russ Hall. I can't remember. It's either Russ Hall or Russ Andrews. One of the we two. We heard about him not too long ago. He's cool. He's cool as hell. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. The, um, I guess hiring or something. Yeah, he's a Falcons fan. I mean, he's a uh, he's a cool guy. He's a, he networks B and I. He does pretty good. They run a pretty sound business. So that nice. might be the only competition that we even. They're a client of ours. That might be the only networking. Well, I mean, there's face. I think there's enough work out there for all of us. That's what I'm saying. I think that's the only face that I even know in networking other than you guys. Yeah, so I mean there's there, there's, many. there's plenty around. to dominate out there, you know, for and from several several um function shoes B and I's one master networks is one power core is one all these different closed closed networking groups you have the ability to And I'm in a I'm actually in a women's group that there's nobody who does garage doors, which you can visit, so nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can uh, trim that that growing period down for you guys. Just just introducing you to a few people that can send you some referrals pretty regularly. So that would be extremely helpful. Like I said, it's what we do. It's what we do. We network. I mean, it's all it's good for them too because every you know you, you have a good uh, a real estate agent that's looking to close a deal and need you to fix their stuff. You do it mm-hmm. in a timely manner, an affordable way, and and you really save a deal for them. You know, it isn't really hard to earn those people's rapport. What right. it is easy to do is lose it. Yes. You know, mess it up, mess it up one time, and you just slid to second place on the list, and second place gets no calls a year. Yeah, you know, zero Absolutely. calls per year. Yep. You can ask any real, every real estate agent's got this, this list of vendors that they use, and I always ask mm-hmm. them, like, how many does the second on the list get calls? I'm like, oh, maybe like one. You know, oh. the the first one gets three hundred and eighty calls a year. The first, the second one gets two. <laughs> you know, that's bad. So, yeah, uh, we can introduce you to some people. We'll just keep networking. Let's keep the communication open. Anything that we can do for you guys, whether it be the podcast platform or, or anything else that we can help from a marketing standpoint, we're learning all of this as you're learning it, too. Like I said, yeah. we're, we're small business as small business kids. Mm-hmm. We're organic. We're here. We're Ackworth. We're, we're not going anywhere. So We have to get our commercial idea going. What's your commercial <laughs> idea? Running into the garage door. Oh, commercial, like video commercial. I was about to say, if you want to talk commercial garage doors, no, 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 no. When you're ready for that, that's well, that's I'm all not of our. There yet. That's all of our. I yet. have a, uh, I have a client that has, um, probably has twenty bays, honestly, and he does only tractor trailer repair. Yeah, and they're all so big, big bays. Yeah, you can't big pick doors. these garage doors up. No, yeah. at all. There's a lot of overhead in that, so like oh, you okay. said, yet. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not yet. Yeah. There is. Well, when you when you big get equipment, you'll you'll adjust. I'm sure. I'm I'm very confident that you guys will have a booming business in no time. So, I mean, it's been August. It's been five months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we're still babies. Well, and we started still with babies. zero. <laughs> yeah. Got a crawl COVID. before you all. You know. Yeah. His business got slow. Everything got slow. Lead times are sixteen weeks for doors. Yeah, yeah, some of them. You can sell them, but you're not going to get paid for four months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, just trudging along. Well, like I said, if we can help you, we can. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Cool. Thanks. Thanks.